The kinetic theory of gases. You'll recall from AS, Brownian motion. This was discovered by Robert Brown in 1827 while observing pollen grains floating in water. We can observe the same motion with smoke particles in air. If we shine light from the side of this cell containing smoke and air and observe the particles using a microscope, we'd see the particles something like this but they'd be in constant motion. If we could observe the path of an individual smoke particle it would go something like this following straight lines in between collisions. The motion is caused by collisions with the much smaller and faster air molecules but Brownian motion showed that the particles are in constant motion. The kinetic theory model for a gas shows the macroscopic properties of a gas, the pressure, volume and temperature, to be due to these tiny molecular movements. It is based on several simplifying assumptions. The molecules of a particular gas are identical. Collisions between the molecules and with the container are perfectly elastic, meaning kinetic energy is conserved. No forces are exerted between molecules except during impacts of negligible duration. The particles behave like tiny billiard balls. Gravity is ignored and between collisions particles move in straight lines at a constant speed. Motion is therefore completely random. There is a sufficiently large number of molecules for statistical methods to be used. We can ignore the motion of one particular particle. The size of the molecules is negligible compared to their separation. And Newtonian mechanics applies. I'm now going to run through the derivation of the kinetic theory equation. You don't need to be able to follow this derivation, though each individual step is fairly straightforward. You certainly don't need to be able to reproduce the derivation, but it might help your understanding of the kinetic theory to follow it through just the once. We start off with a cube of side length L. I'll call this direction X, this direction Y, and vertically up Z. I'll also call this wall of the container wall A, and this wall wall B. We'll now consider one particle of mass M travelling towards wall A, that is in the x direction, with a velocity u1 and I've shown the particle here. As collisions between particles and between the particles and the walls are elastic it will rebound with the same size of velocity but in the opposite direction minus u1 and I'll show the rebounded particle here. The change in momentum is therefore 2 mu1 the time to the next collision with A will be the time the particle takes to go across to wall B and back to A. This is a distance of L plus L or distance of 2L divided by the speed U1. So the time taken will be 2L over U1 distance over speed. From Newton's second law you know that force is equal to the rate of change of momentum or change in momentum over time taken which in this case the change in momentum we said was 2mu1 over the time taken of 2l over u1 which we can write as mu1 squared over l pressure is equal to force divided by area and the area of wall A is L squared and we have the force here so we can write the pressure is equal to m u1 squared over L divided by the area L squared which we can write as m u1 squared over L cubed I've copied that final equation onto the next slide if there are n molecules in the box and their components of velocity towards wall A, that is in the x direction, 
our U1, U2 and so on, the total pressure on side A will be M over L cubed times U1 squared plus U2 squared and so on. We can write this term as this u squared in square brackets that is what is called the mean square velocity towards wall A. All we've done there is found the average of the velocities squared. The particles won't just be bouncing back and forth between walls A and B they'll be going in all directions and we can say their actual velocity has a value c. So if c is the resultant velocity of a particle with x, y and z components u, v and w where u is the velocity in the x direction, v the velocity in the y direction and w the velocity in the z direction then we can say that their actual velocity squared will be equal to their x component squared which we call u squared their y component squared which we call v squared and their z component squared we'll call w squared and for all the molecules their mean square speed will be equal to their mean square speed in the x direction plus their mean square speed in the y direction plus their mean square speed in the z direction Again, I've copied that last equation onto the next slide. One other thing, length cubed of our cube is equal to the volume. So we can simplify this equation once more to get P is equal to a third Nm over V times the mean square speed. We can rearrange again to get PV is equal to a third Nm mean square speed. This section here, pressure and volume, are macroscopic properties, properties of the whole body of the gas. These quantities here are microscopic properties relating to the individual molecules in the gas. Let's just look at a few examples of what the equation in this format means. Well, it tells us that the pressure is directly proportional to the number of molecules as long as the mass of the molecules, the volume and their mean square speed remains the same. So, here we have a number of molecules N. If we have a pressure P, we then have the same volume but with twice the number of molecules, we would have twice the pressure. This is because there would be twice the number of collisions with the sides of the container over a given time. This equation also tells us that pressure is directly proportional to the mass of the molecules. Again, as long as the number of molecules, the volume and the mean square speed remain the same. So here we have a container with a number of molecules of mass m and a pressure p. If we have the same volume of container with the same number of particles but now each of mass 2m we would have a pressure 2p. The equation tells us that pressure is inversely proportional to volume as long as the number of particles, the mass and their mean square speed remain the same. So here again we have our container of volume V with the particles giving a pressure P if we have the same number of the same mass of particles at the same mean square speed with twice the volume we would have half the pressure. And finally the equation tells us that pressure is directly proportional to the mean square velocity of the molecules. The molecular speed is related to the temperature of the gas. This is covered on the video on the kinetic energy of gases. But if we were to plot a graph of pressure against the mean square velocity of the molecules we would get the straight line through the origin. We can demonstrate some of these ideas quite simply in the lab using a container with a vibrating base. That causes these steel balls to bounce up and down. As they hit the lid which is able to move they can move it higher. The height of the lid will depend on the speed 
and the mass and the number of balls. If we now increase the mass of the lid until with the same level of vibration the balls are taking up half the volume we now have twice the pressure so by doubling the pressure we've halved the volume. But if we now double the number of particles in the container we would get back to the original volume. So now doubling the number of molecules has doubled the volume.